Hello, and welcome to Top of the World. Today's task, trailer. What do you think? It's a jammed bearing, seized bearing, broken bearing. Anyway, I've got a wheel locked. So, uh, I know I've overheated it, boiled it, cooked it, raspberried it. It's no use. But I've got to find out what it is. So, I've got a wheel that won't turn anymore. This one here. I'm going to start by taking it off. You know that not pressing record thing. Anyway, what did you miss? Tractor, wheel, nuts, hub. Okay. I'm sure that ain't going to be easy to get that off. Now, well, we need a knee pad. And thankfully, I'll just strip down the dishwasher. And this bit of insulation out of the dishwasher. Very nice soundproofing, whatever it is. Now that I have no idea what we're going to find in it. So I've got to assume it'll be a big nut. Oh, there's plenty of grease in there. Yuck. Let's see how tight that is. Oh, it ain't tight. Okay, so we've got plenty of grease. And then that wasn't overly tight. Yeah. Right, and that's freed right off. Okay, let's see what we got then. Well, the bearing looks good. the outer bearing that's for sure that's lovely okay ah okay brake failure that's what we got there the lining has just come straight off of that Yeah, the inner bearings are good. Yeah. Component failure. Right. We need new pads then. There's some evidence of water in there, which is never good. Uh, I suppose really if I'm doing this side I should do the other side at the same time and um, yeah they're not worn out they're just old very old well, this, oh no I was gonna say this side is not showing any sign of delamination there you go rusty let me show you this Water's got in, rusted this, blown it. And that's what's happened on that side. Not enough grease to keep the water out. Okay, so we took these off. 
Yeah, no use. Okay, but the challenge is going to be finding these. A miracle has happened. We don't get miracles very often, but a miracle has happened. So it's two days. Well, I the only reason it's two days because I had to go to town and I had to go to town to get these brake shoes. So off I go to town, right? Brake shoes at hand. Not expecting a miracle. No, miracle. Not only did I get them, right? When I finally found where I had to go to get them, they had them on the shelf. Check this out. Oh my God. Amazing. Just amazing. You'd have to, you'd have to have watched my previous million videos and understand where I live to find out how amazing that is. It's just, it's just amazing. Anyway, so I've just cleaned this up. We're gonna give it a quick beno. Right, and while that's drying, then we're going to go and fit one side of the brake shoe. So I've cleaned up in my parts cleaner, my little bits of brackets and various things. We're going to go and fit one side that. By the time we come back, that should be dry. And I'm getting on with my windows, you ask. They're ready to go in, but I run out of the old... I run out of the old... Uh, we had a stripping, so I've got a load more. So they're the two that you saw in the previous video. Look, you can just, it's just amazing. This is the set that's undone. Those two are done and those two are waiting to go in above. So I've nearly done all 12 sashes. Right, let's give this a quick. And it's kind of worth doing while you've got this off because um, I doubt in the life of that trailer those brakes have ever been done. Although, even the cap's been welded at some point. I suppose we could. There we go. Good enough for the girls we date. Okay. So we're going to take our, our drill. Oh, we're going to get to this in a minute with our little wheel on. We take our pads and our tools. Don't fix the brake pads. When we come back, that'll be dry. Um, now, I didn't bother replacing the bearings because the bearings are good. But what we do need... Come to my amazing stores. Vehicle department. What we do need is <clears throat> Is that older than me? What are you saying? Probably. Um oh, we're getting a bit low on that. Look at that. That's just, that's just the best grease, that is. And do you know why that's the best grease? Because the can's open. Ah. We do have some, uh, we do have some uh, better grease here, somewhere. I bet nobody's got a parts department that looks quite like mine. <laughs> have I got anything? Post 1980. No. Have I got anything post 1970? Yeah. But not a lot. Right. Uh. 
Okay, I want to have a look in there. Let's take that and take this. I'm going to crack the top off this and we'll have a little look. Nothing like um, nothing like amateur filming, is there? While you're holding things in your hand and the camera and blah de blah de blah. Surprise! Should we clean all this stuff off the top? Yeah, we should. It's exciting, isn't it? <gasps> no way! I acquired this quite recently. Okay, I've got to show you what's in here. Look at that. Well, the fact it says seven pounds on there means it's pre-1974. So that's good. 60s Greece. Now we're somewhere near my age, same age as me. So uh, we'll say that's a good vintage then. Okay, when Greece was Greece and men were men and bullshit was confined to the end of a fist. Right, have I said my bit now? Do I feel better? Much better, much better, much better. Right, let's take that. Right, I won't embarrass myself by dropping this and all the camera all the way out. We'll go outside now. Now comes that fateful bit of, do you remember how it all goes? Thing. Yeah. Maybe. Right, we think we know that one went there because of the spring that goes through there, to which, of course, we have a whole new spring set, which is just amazing, amazing, amazing. Really? Quite what happens when that goes through there, I don't know. All right. All right. Okay. All right, that's all that connected with the right springs. Now we're gonna use this 1960s Molly grease. Look at that. How good stuff is that? I'll pack out this bearing with new grease. The reason I took all the grease out of this is because I'd boiled it all. Renovated hub. Which I painted the top on, obviously. Okay, so what we don't want to do is get any grease in on the liner now I've cleaned it all out. Pack some grease inside there, like so. See how good Molly grease is for your hands. So um, I'm preparing my hands with all this, with all this grease and Mac. Subscriber of mine, wonderful sense of humour. He said I needed a pedicure, and I'm thinking, well, how does he know that? Now, I've seen pedicure on my credit card statement a million times. I thought I had something to do with a dog. I pedicure. Perhaps I should look that up. Nothing to do with the dog. <laughs> anyway, so I thought in preparation for having one of those, I should soften my hands up and not bother wearing gloves because, you know, gloves and solvents, they don't, so no gloves. I'm softening them up for a pedicure because 
or off where it's something to dog at. Anyway, let's see what's going on here. Now we've got grease everywhere, we find out that the brakes, the discs are not sitting in where they need to. Does that mean I've got to unadjust this brake cable? Right, so we've squirted the adjuster from behind. There's the adjuster nut. That adjusts those pads in and out. I'm not quite sure. Oh, that's in. Okay. Turn that. There we go. Drum on. Right. More pedicure preparation. Pack that bearing with grease. Then we go with the front bearing. There we go. Right, that's tight. Then it says, uh, oh, actually, we better do the. Right, then we've got to take it back by 30%. 30%. Something about there is what it says. Now what we've got to do. Is find the owl. Which I think is there. Which is there. We want a fat but not particularly long pin. Fat owl. Okay. All right. Of course, obviously it's not quite tall enough. Why would it be?
Right, that's the side that was jammed, done. Now what we do is we take our jungle box twist the ankle on the damn ball Do you think men that have got impact drivers do the job any quicker overall for how much money it costs and do they need a pedicure? Oh. So when I said we were going to mention that later in small hand tools specifically screwdrivers, battery operated screwdrivers It would be impossible to calculate how many screws I've driven over the years on new buildings and uh, just it's just not... Anyway, so I've been an Atachi man 20 plus years and, and the Bosch ones they used to blow up and wear out or you know, and of course everything wears out because you're using it and then Atachi they went over to the plastic gearboxes and everything went to shit. And then they went back to metal gearboxes because everything went to shit with their plastic gearboxes. I don't know why they thought plastic would work. Anyway. Anyway. So now what I've got is I've got two attaches, both of them under five years old. One with a plastic gearbox and one with the new improved metal gearbox. Except they're not called Itachi anymore, they're Honky honky tonks, or anyway. One, the plastic one, that's stuck in low speed, and that's still quite good for screwing. The metal gearbox one. Well, that's stuck in high speed. That's quite good for drilling. But it means... It means um, I have to have uh, two of them on every job. Because uh, presumably, if you're drilling, if you're screwing, then you're drilling. Not always because a lot of the screws, modern technology and all that. Anyway, so I've been wanting to uprate my drivers for a while. And just pick one make that I think can service all my needs. You know, sometimes you'd like to think you could do that with a woman, but... So why I thought I could do it with a you know, a hand tool, I don't know. Anyway. The point about that is, is that, well, that was never gonna work, Simon. The point I'm making is I have to move to a new manufacturer. Or we don't want no honky-tonk things that don't seem to last. However, hand tools, when asking other men, really controversial. And I'll tell you why. Is you go onto site and there's 20 men. Right, and the chances are most of those men will have a different thought process. And what's the right manufacturer? Or battery, or and, or, and so it goes on. However, there are 
Wow. Huh. Check that out. That one had already gone. Look at that. This one's in worse condition by a lot than the other side. Much worse condition. I'll get you in here and show you. So this brake pad, look at that. Wow, there you go. Much worse, same problem on there, look. Oh. Same problem on this side. So, good job. We have some more idea of what we're doing now. So the first thing we'll do is wet that old adjuster behind there down. Get a 17 mil spanner, which we should have in here. So I can adjust this off. Right, they're fully adjusted down. Now we know what we're doing here now. So I can change these out completely. Can't I? Those. Boy, the magic of editing. There we go. And we want a bag of new springs. No, we don't need those. It's not going particularly well for me. I don't know why. Perhaps it's because these are adjusted so far in.
We'll wait for that to dry. Uh, probably entertain ourselves with uh, the washing of the pre predicure hands, uh, followed by coffee, and that should be dry. Okay, done. New brake shoes, both sides. No more overheating, no more fires. Probably a job I'm not gonna have to do again. Anyway, that's all for today. Thank you all for joining me, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you like the content, subscribe if you're not, really helps me out. And uh, we'll catch you all on the next one. Bye for now.